Hi and welcome to Rock and the Planet. Tonight I am really chuffed. It's no exaggeration when I say I have two of the biggest icons of New Zealand music in New Zealand music history. They are here tonight to join me on Rock and the Planet. I have New Zealand's undisputed king of rock and roll, Mr. Johnny Devlin, and New Zealand's legendary guitar great, Grey Bartlett. But before we meet them, first let's see who's been rocking the planet this week. Queen's Clearwater Revival's frontman John Fogarty is to perform at the Venetian Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas in his show called Peace, Love and Credence. The show is based on the year of 1969, featuring songs from the three smash hit albums Credence released that year. There will be unseen archival footage, and he will be telling a few personal stories taken from his new book, Fortunate Song, My Life, My Music. The show starts on January the 8th, Peace, love and credence. I can't wait. I'm saving up the pennies. I'm going to be there. Now, talking about legendary, here's a legendary guitarist. I mean, legendary is an understatement for this man. My first very special guest this evening, Mr. Gray Bartlett. Wow. Great to have you here. Hey, lovely to be here, Shane. Oh, it's a real Great pleasure. To see you, and you bought your guitar. I bought ooh, one of them. Ooh, I'm so happy One of the about 12. That. Yeah, one of the 12. <laughs> <laughs> the wife uh, doesn't mind you buying no, all those no, guitars? No, no. You used to have more than that, but there was a time when you you've got to get rid of some of that. <laughs> yeah, you've got to get rid of the, some of the jettison. Yeah. The house not big enough. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, Gray, I, I've known you for so long. I mean, it really it has been 30, 40 years or something. Must be. Uh, over the, my lifespan anyway and uh, none of us are getting any younger and <laughs> I don't know anything really about your early career. I don't know a lot about it, you know. Yeah. Were you in the rock and roll scene? And Look, I, I wasn't funny enough. I, I sort of was. I, my group, the Graham Bartlett Combo, which I use as a sort of a, one of those yeah. groups where you had yeah. great musicians and their, their ability to play all the gigs. Like in those days, it was three or four a week we did. Yeah. And... Um, I'd have musicians that were able to go to other bands if they like. The only deal I had with them all, and these are good musicians, yeah. was that they've got to find a replacement that knows all the stuff that we do. And I still, I still feel like that yeah. way. That that's how it's got to be. And, and that's how it another, was. Yeah. And we had great musicians. Some of them are passed on, but yeah. we, they were all really great musicians. And we had great yeah. attitude because they'd ring up on the, on the Thursday or the Wednesday and say, yeah. oh, I've got so-and-so depping yeah. for me tonight. And I'd say, I said, that's fine. He knows all the gear. So there's a heap of work around at that stage. There was. We're talking about 1959, 50. Uh, 60, maybe 61, 62. Yeah, 61, 62. Sort of was the period I And started. what were you playing then? Shadows? I did a bit of everything, really. A bit of yeah, rock and roll. It was just rock and roll, really. A bit of Gene yeah. Vincent, even. I even mean, Gene stuff Vincent, like that. Beep, Lula. But then I got into another group, which is the Kerry Hart Quartet. And we did, like, when the Graham Butler combo was working, yes. uh, we had nights off, and we do the Kerry Hart and John Wilcox trio I was in. Okay. So you can see the sort of music yep. that was changing. We you were in jazz. You were Miles a little bit Davis, more sophisticated over there. Did a lot of Miles Davis stuff with Kerry because he hated oh. rock and roll, and he hated guitar yes. boogie. And even though he doesn't mind me, he'll see this and he'll laugh. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's true. He used to tell people to, you know, we didn't play that other stuff. Yeah. He called it another word. But... But look, in the end, I guess I was probably known to be able to play a whole lot of things. Yeah, you were and, all around us. And I enjoyed that and enjoyed doing a lot of commercials yeah. in the days of Bernie and all that stuff. And it would have improved all your playing. And Bernie being and Bernie playing. Allen. Yes. I was just speaking to just a couple yeah. of days ago. He was actually... And Terry player. Gray was another one. Yeah, Got Terry a lot Gray. of commercials. And so I did a lot of that work yeah. because I, you know, I could read the stuff and, yeah. and did a lot of those... So were you playing dances in the at Yeah, this we did time? dances, 21st weddings, the usual yeah. stuff. And around the and little clubs, whatever clubs there were in that Club time. Club, we did a lot of those Coffee places. Bars. I'm trying to think of the name. I yeah, Bel Air, did you ever play down there? No. no you were based in Auckland. Though. Based in Auckland. But we did a lot of stuff outside it. Like I did the dances in Hamilton, at the, yeah. the places down there. Over the, over Fishers, the hills. To Kofi and all those ones. And that was a big, big major then. That was a oh. major going over to Hamilton. Matter, matter dances with Brian Cotter. We did those yeah. regularly. Yeah. And I mean, those were big things in those days. Yeah. They, were, they were on. Always and, packed. And then, of course, I got the name got around and I toured with um, Vera Lynn, Eddie Calvert, and all them. Vera Lynn, she was only young yeah. then. And I did. <laughs> yes, she was. <laughs> Sorry, but what a great group. And, and and Harry Lewis, who was a husband, he used to jingle his yeah. coins and he yeah. walked down the street. He, lovely people. Yeah. And Funny uh, what you Les remember, Still isn't it? was in that band. Remember who? Les Still, the bass yes, player? Yes, yes, yes. Well, Les toured with us, and Les is a great musician. Don yeah. Branch on drums. 
Yeah. Um, so I did all those shows with the orchestra. So can I ask you what sort of age you were then? So you were I'm trying to work out. It was 60, so okay. I was in my you can 20s. Lie a little bit. You're in the early 20s, 20s. Yeah, yeah. Now, before that, though, um, did you start playing at school? I want to know. I started you, playing when I was. Are about, you from Auckland? Yes, but okay. I started playing. My brother, my brother had an old Tex Morton guitar. Barry was my brother. He's still alive. He's in, yeah. in Tarrant. And he plays. And, still? and he, I don't know if he still plays, but in those days, he had a Tex Morton, one of those white ones with a lasso on it, oh. and playing them was like playing an electric fence. You know, it was like very <laughs> hard. <laughs> That's how I refer to <laughs> Number it. Number eight wire. Well, you, you'd have to have very strong hair. But, um, but for me, it was just hearing the notes. And one of the first tunes I ever dared to pluck away on was in the key of D, and it was called The Wayward Wind. Do, do, do you remember do, that? Do, do, do. Pretty easy. Oh, The Wayward yeah. Wind. And I used to play it in D, and I loved it. And when I was on the farm with where my, yeah. one of my sisters lived with her husband, I used to go down and do milking, help with the... Yeah. Making these concrete posts as well, you know, and yeah. shake. Oh, I worked hard as a kid, and I used to. I took my guitar. The, the, by that stage, I owned the Tex Morton one. I, I yep. Yep. It was, handed it down because we were a very poor family. Let me tell you. And so, so I used to play that. And I used to play the way we went out in the hills there, thinking, God, this is the life. If I could just, and now yeah, I got this free. imagination running wild. Free. But it was great. Yeah. And I learned from that to let your imagination and your desire for things yeah. take over. And were so you a big family? Uh, oh, yes. With my parents, it was ten of us. I'm the so youngest of eight, and they're all still alive. Yes, you know. And they're all still alive? Oh, yes. Fantastic. It was, well, not my parents. But no, no, I mean, but, but, but uh, all your 30, brothers and sisters? Yeah. 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 But, uh, but we all had, we had a very happy childhood. Um, and it's a funny thing. When you haven't got much, you just make do with your yeah. growing stuff in the back garden and all yeah. that. And we... Had, had lots of laughs, lots of fun, yeah. and lots of good times. Uh, but the music side of it was great. My first real break came when I worked with a guy called Vince Callagher. I know that name, Vince now, Callagher. Vince Callagher had a, had a whole lot of Bye Bye Baby Goodbye was yeah. one of his first Bye hits. Bye and he had another one as well. And the Aleris, Dawn and Jean, were the yes. ones that pulled me into that. And I did, I did a whole lot of recordings, and I toured with them uh, in the beach resorts. Yep. in the early 60s, 61. Mm. So that was my start. And we stayed, and that was run by Phil Warren and I'm trying to think of the name, Phil Don Warren. Lillian. Don Lillian, yeah, of course, his partner. In and crime. we played in these places. <laughs> and of course, the place we played in, and those, those like the Rue Kaka, Sound yeah. Show and yeah. all that stuff, yeah. we actually, um, that's where we slept. <laughs> you slept, we slept the on the floor. He did the gig. On the floor. Yeah. And saw the little eyes of the rats and the mice that ran around. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> And you pay, what, what sort of pay did they give you those I think days? we're lucky to get a couple of quid. Or a couple of quid. Two quid. You travel the way, a bit of petrol yeah, money. And, and the, the, the leader of the group in those days was a guy called Ian Lowe. Ian Lowe, and I Ian Lowe became name. pretty famous because he was featured a few years ago as one of the, um, the guy that's, he had 13 wives and about a 56 kids or something. <laughs> and he was living in a, 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 a Colony, what did he call them? Oh, yeah, yeah, um, um, a commune. Commune. A commune. So he lived over and he was getting all the state's money. And so there was a big case wow. where a couple of the girls yeah. said they abused him. I can't actually believe that, knowing Ian, he wasn't that sort of a guy. He nah. was just a free for all guy, you know. Yeah. Uh, but Bruce King actually brought my attention to it. And now Bruce, Bruce King was, was a drummer yeah. who was around at that era, so and we know. Bruce that. was, um, you know, lovely guy. My, oh, still, still playing, still, still out mate. there doing yeah. it. Great mate. Yeah. But so that was really the start, and from that, I got some sort, of, sort of more attention and other shows, and, mm, and slowly. Yeah. And but you were an instrumentalist then. Yes, and then Zodiac picked me up. Well? I didn't sing, but okay. in latter years I did, of course, yeah. and we did, I did harmonies. Yeah. And, and um, but Zodiac picked you up. Zodiac picked it up after Peter went to. This is Peter Poser went to Dalton's Viking Records. Oh, that's right. So yeah. I got. I sort of was a replacement for him. And then my first record was Last Stage West. And then the second one, or, or the second one that was of any consequence, was uh, La Playa, which was released here as Serenade to a Small Guitar. <laughs> and, of course, that was a gangbuster and yeah. sold. Well, they, the, the official number was 410,000 copies in yeah. Japan. It did a lot more than that. So we sold half a million anyway. And the albums, of course. And the albums... Was that we did a top ten with Haunted Guitar, which was all recorded in New yeah. Zealand. And, of course, that's how Bruce, um, who's now passed away at the studio's mascot, got their money for new equipment, because oh. in those days you had overseas earnings. Yeah, 
And so that's and how they brought it in, and they and they, they could used the overseas refurbished the studio with yeah. good gear and stuff. And I mean, it didn't cost me anything, no. but he was able to say yeah. that. La Playa. Now that that is the song that really took you away internationally. Yeah. Yes, it did. you went to Japan and uh, various other countries yes. around Asia. Yep. And what I mean, it must have been amazing in nineteen sixty one. Nineteen sixty no sixty five sixty six. Sixty five. It was that late. That yeah. area. But um, but the album and the clippings that I showed you in there was yeah. sixty seven sixty eight. So yeah. it'll give you some idea. When that so it was around about yeah. that late period. But you were there oh, touring yes. Japan. Well, they flew me over RCA Victor in those yeah. days. Uh, took a RCA band. Taka Tori, no, just over myself, and I did young all the top television shows because yeah. it was been a hit yeah. record, and, and and I did the Tokyo Hilton with my own show. Yeah. In those days when I knew nothing about, <laughs> I had a director who was telling me go ten <laughs> paces to the light, go to that little. <laughs> Mark that's in the centre oh, stage. Then when I you still get that now. Go to the other side, come back, take bows, acknowledge the orchestra. So I mean, I had no idea what was going yeah. on. I, but you I learnt were it. Learning real fast. And um, I did young TBS. I did uh, Japan Seven Twenty. All these big pop shows yeah. with all pop artists, and of course, I never yeah. understood a word. And you never looked uh, back. Talking about it was back. great. And then. Uh, ca uh, from all that, I came back and I felt, you know, I was yes. confident, really yeah. confident that I could roll on. And um, and we did, really. We and did. it was an acoustic song that you did. It that was an right? acoustic song. Which is wonderful. I love acoustic But I did guitar. it on electric yeah. in the in the show because we yeah. had dances and yeah. oohs and ahs going shows, on. Because yeah. the producer of the show is Japanese. Uh, he's but you've pretty got this smart. beautiful acoustic guitar sitting yeah. next to you. That's what I was alluding to. You want to see that. Slowly yeah. but surely. Slowly. And you're going to play us a beautiful acoustic. You're sure. still writing music. Of course. Uh, yeah. Of your own and everything else. And everyone loves Gray Bartlett. When he picks that guitar up, it's magic, it's music. And uh, Gray's going to play us a beautiful song that he's written himself. And it's a tribute to Shed Atkins. That's, that's all. It. We, that's it. Do you want to play it now? Beautiful. Okay. Just play away. Beautiful. Master be Actually, I was sitting there. If I had closed my eyes, I'd have thought I was listening to Shad Atkins. Because, oh, you. you know, I'm just, a, I've got every single record he ever made, Shad Atkins. He was fantastic. Slinky and all that stuff. Anyway, but we'll get away from Shad Atkins. I'm talking about another one that may have um, inspired you was Hank Marvin. He's coming over here soon. Definitely. And you've had a lot to do with his career. Of you've, course. You, well, you brought him over here. We brought him over year. here in 2013 yeah. and toured him, did 10 gigs through New Zealand. Yeah. And it was a very successful tour. Um, and he's Hanks, gone back to acoustic guitar that's it. now as well. So he's doing only for those tours, for the acoustic stuff. He doesn't do any of the, the, the patches. The electric stuff, stuff yeah. Uh, but he does do the odd, like, guitar tango, which yeah, is done which is acoustic. acoustic and stuff. And, um, and he has a lot of fun. He's a brilliant performer. Right. Brilliant with audiences. He's yeah. got these wonderf wonderful subtle jokes that lead into the songs. Yeah, he does have he's a way just with words. Oh, he's brilliant. <laughs> and he's a brilliant guy and his wife uh, mm. is just, a, Carol is just a lovely lady yeah. too. So he's here in Auckland at the Maidment Theatre yes. on the Don't 20th. Miss Don't miss that. And you've got to get your tickets with a little gypsy group, yeah. piano accord, and another acoustic. Yeah, and yeah. Gary Taylor, yeah. who was with The Herd, the group The Herd. The Herd, Peter Frampton's old There you go. Yeah. So. So he's with them. Worth seeing. Yeah, oh, Worth I'd seeing. say it would be. So look out for that. It's 20th of November. Right. And um, we're talking about gigs, have you got new gigs coming up? Well, I have. What, what we're planning is, of course, a new album, which I re recorded in March at Mike McCarthy studio. Uh, we use the Sony soundstage yes. orchestra stuff, you know, which is magnificent. Mm -hmm. And it's an album called Love, dot, 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 always, with an exclamation mark. And it's really music from... Um, 
some of the great movies. Is it uh, dedicated to your wife? You know, it, it could be. Yes, of course. Yeah. You're yes. a romantic sort of guy. Nose, nose, that. wink, wink. <laughs> and, and so we've done that, and we're adding some bonus tracks of, believe it or not, songs like Apache and that yeah. from my platinum albums of, of the past, uh, as bonus, and that'll be announced for the tour that goes in March, April. Yep. And um, March and April, this is yeah, 2016. We're, we're doing about 12 to 14 shows, some clubs, theatres as well. I'll definitely be there. So it'll be great. And we've got the wonderful Chet O'Connell with us. Chet O'Connell, and, great guitar. And top musicians, yeah. the best in the land. Yeah. 2016, April. March, April. The man's on tour, March, April. Gray Bartlett, it's a real pleasure having you here. It's Gray. a pleasure, Thanks mate. Lovely to see you, Shane. And we'll keep up the good work. We, will. we ain't going anywhere yet. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gray Bartlett. What a guitar legend. And now I have another legend. From one legend to another, I've got the legendary, undisputed, king of New Zealand rock and roll, Johnny Devlin here. Mate. Thank you, Shane. What so a lovely honored. introduction. I am so honoured. That's my pleasure. Because you have been one of my heroes ever since I was like 16 years old, 15. I first landed in Australia in 1959, 1960. And the first TV I show put on, I put on a TV show, it's called Bandstand. There was Johnny Devlin playing on the TV in black and white. And I just thought, hey, they've got great rock and roll singers here in Australia as well. I was overwhelmed. <laughs> and you had Johnny O'Keefe and Lonnie Lee and all the boys yeah, yeah, on that's Bandstand. Right. Jeez, you've got and a that's good my memory introduction show. to you. And um, I didn't even know you're from New Zealand then. I was just like, the first time I saw you was on Australian TV. Right. And uh, been a fan ever since, mate. Thank you, my I friend. I had to have that little spiel. Well, know. it was great working with you a few years ago. Yeah, the, not long the best ago. Of the best. Yeah, best yeah. of the best tour. That was too cool. long ago. Nine actually. years ago. Now we need to do it again. I think so. Yeah. Now, welcome back to New Zealand. My pleasure. And I've got to say, congratulations on this huge award you just received, the oh, Benny Award from the VAC, the what Variety a Artists Club. What a wonderful thrill that was! I, I heard that I'd been nominated for yeah. an award. Yeah. And but I no idea that uh, that I would win the most prestigious award yeah, that, that that uh, New Zealand's got to offer. Because you you voted by your peers, all the other artists, all the other previous Benny Award winners, and uh, Jeez, they I'm all lucky get together I've and have you. a big debate. Yeah, I'm glad they haven't forgotten me. No, no one's forgotten you here. Yeah, we all love you here, mate. I know. You're still the New Zealand's undisputed king yeah. of rock and roll. And I'm still a Kiwi too. You are, of course. Oh, you are. Look don't at the you show. Worry about that. Yeah. I'll still carry a yeah. Kiwi passport. I'm glad the All Blacks And I'm proud around. of it. I'm <laughs> proud of it. <laughs> now, Johnny, I want to go back to those early days when you, you started out, like, uh, you're from Wanganui, obviously. Everyone knows you. You were a band clerk in Wanganui. Yes. And I heard Elvis Presley singing Heartbreak Hotel. Yep. And I decided I wanted to be just like Elvis and sing just like Elvis Presley. Yeah. Which we all were inspired to do. Yep. Uh, but you, the stories about you jumping on a motorbike with goggles, no helmet in those days, a guitar across your back, and off to the gig in Napier and things like that. <laughs> yeah. And in one night, you travel all the way back to Wanganui, is that right? Exactly. Is That's this a right. true story? Yes, this is a true story, and I got paid 10 shillings for that gig and uh, loved it. And, and it the was, gas tell, I can even tell you where it was, the Swing and Sway Club in Napier. The Swinging Sway Club. Swing, swing and Sway. Swing and Sway. The old Red Cross Hall there. Sounds real rock and roll. Yeah, yeah sounds fantastic. He was, was a ripper. But, uh, and so you also, before you were a solo performer, you did work with the family. I think you had a musical yeah. family and you yeah. went out there and you... you well, of, we did, uh, yes. We you had did the Devlin Family Show. The Devlin Family sh did a lot of charity shows and, and uh, talent quests. Wanganui area, uh, and then of course rock and roll came in, and it was a bit yeah. much for mum and dad, so the boys went off on their own. We called ourselves the River City Ramblers. We started doing Lonnie Donegan skiffle stuff, yeah. you know, way back then, and That's then of course rock and roll hit, so we uh, we formed a rock and roll band, and uh, and that was it. Yeah. And, uh, is this is this is this true? Uh, Benny Levin. Now Benny Levin, a promoter here, yeah. well known. He had lots of acts under his name: Craig Scott and uh, Larry's Larry Morris and the Rebels, Larry's Rebels. Um, did he actually discover you down there and bring you up to Auckland first? Uh, Benny, Benny, no, but he let me do his shows when they came around the Wanganui area. Yeah. But the guy that really discovered me was a guy called Johnny Cooper. Johnny Cooper, the yeah, late, rock and roll. The late Johnny Cooper, the, the singing uh, yeah, Maori cowboy. cowboy. He uh, 
he uh, gave me a big break uh, in, in a lot of his talent quests and uh, called me uh, New Zealand's answer to Elvis Presley. And, uh, and so I, tra I travelled around with Johnny for quite a while and won quite a lot of his talent quests. Yeah, because he had a lot of talent quests. He had the big one in Wellington, didn't he, in those days? Yeah, well, he, he, he was incredible. He had, the he town hall was jammed. Out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely packed. With new talent and everything else yep. playing there. And yep. you were one of those. Yep. So what, what, he, who brought you to Auckland then? Did you just decide to get up uh, and pack your bags? No, and? I had a, a breakup with my girlfriend and I knew <laughs> one, one guy in, in Auckland and he said, any time you come up, you know, look me up. Well, I didn't look him up, but on the way home, uh, he yelled out at me and recognised me and uh, introduced me to Dave Dunningham at the at the Trades Hall, yeah. uh, the Jive Centre, the heartbeat of New Zealand rock and roll. It, it was. was, yeah, it was. It was incredible. Even I when I came up. over here in 1962, it was still going. Oh, was, yeah. And it was pumping. We were packing them out. We were getting uh, seven, eight 800,000 uh, yeah. every Friday and Saturday night. Yeah. Uh, it was. It definitely was a heartbeat, and uh, that was the start of it. The kids started screaming, and uh, people started noticing, and uh, that's when I met Phil Warren. Uh, he, he cut my first record for me, or which or, you did at the at the same hall. You we did, did it, it, live. Did it live. We did it live in the trades hall yeah. and on a little two-track machine by Merv uh, Thomas from Merv the Dixie Thomas. Landers. Yeah, he was yeah, in the yeah. band, Merv, and uh, he had a little two-track machine, and we recorded yeah. Lordy Was Claudia, and that's. That's how it all started. Now, really, you just became an overnight sensation. I mean, everybody was talking about Johnny Devlin up at the trades hall. So yeah. everyone was packing the place. Um, and you had a hit record with Lordy Miss Claudie. Yeah, the girls um, were screaming. And yeah. uh, then we had an offer to go on tour for Sir Robert Kerridge, who owned all the theatres yeah. throughout New yeah. Zealand. And uh, so we formed a family show called The Johnny Devlin Show, and we went right through New Zealand. It was supposed to last for two weeks. Yeah. Then it was extended for another two, another two, another two, until eventually six months around New Zealand. Virtually one six night stand. Just on the road. All yeah, the break all previous box office records and yeah. uh, and uh, really, really uh, turn the country upside down because yeah. we had a great publicist with us as well. Who was that? A guy called Graham Dent. Oh, Graham and, Dent, and, yeah. Uh, he was my manager in New, in Australia in, yes, in so. 65, 66. Yes, well, Graham <laughs> was a, a wizard on the... On the uh, and we used to depend upon the, uh, the uh, print media because it was only the print media and, and radio. So uh, there was no TV in those days. So it, it, we'd go in the print media just about every day on tour okay. because uh, they turned the fire hose on the kids when they were trying to smash the theatres up and cut the yeah. seats. And uh, there was riots and police were getting injured. And, and you had nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with no. it whatsoever. <laughs> uh, now, the thing is, um, <laughs> I mean, it was magnificent and you were this pop idol and then you went to Australia. But the magic thing is, because it was such a short show, I have to fit so much in. Yeah. I've got to know about... What happened with the Beatles? You've got to tell me some of the story. There must be a story no one else knows. You toured with the Beatles. You, I saw the show when you came back here at yep. the Auckland Town Hall. Yep. And I almost screamed. You had a leather suit on. Yep. You looked the part. And the Beatles, you became very friendly with them. I, I, I did. I yeah. did. And uh, I, I, I treasure still today the wonderful photograph I got taken with them uh, because I helped fix the sound up in the Wellington Town Hall. Yeah. Uh, Lennon said to me, anything you want, name it, you've got it. And I said, oh, I don't want anything. I wouldn't mind getting a photograph taken with you, that's all. <laughs> and I would have asked for a job. I so said, can I join the Beatles? So, yeah. <laughs> so, they, so they came, they got dressed up and they said, yep, not, not a problem. It was taken right here in Auckland. And it's one of the rarest photographs in the world. You can't yeah. get it from the Beatles. You, you, yeah. If you want to get a copy, you've got to get it from me because they did okay. it for me. And so, so we get you got a website we can get hold of that. Yeah, you okay. Can. Yeah, www. Johnny Devlin official or something like official, that. Official. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Official. But um, with, with, they were lovely guys to work with. Uh, I mean, you were on the road with them what for two weeks, three weeks. Yeah, yeah, something like about twenty odd shows because we did two shows yeah. a day, uh, and uh, I think the the thing is they were lovely guys and. What I liked about them is that they they'd bring me into their conversations and yeah. into their yeah. uh, they they had they called me over one night backstage at Wellington Town Hall and said, uh, "Hey Johnny, what do you think of this?" I think they appreciated the fact that I had a few more years on yeah. them, and they they burst into an impromptu version of Hard Day's Night, which hadn't even which been was released. Just yeah, what do you, what do you think of this? Early said, stage. <laughs> it's got to go to number one. 
Yeah. I believe you might be coming back to live in New Zealand. Oh, yes. I'm looking around at the moment. That's one of the reasons I'm here. Okay. Looking for a house. You're looking for something. Any real estate agents out there? Look up Johnny Devlin. He's looking to spend some money. Yes. Okay. Okay. Johnny, I could, I could talk to you all night, but we haven't got time. Been fantastic having you here. My pleasure. Enjoyed your company. Yeah, We're going you. to go to a clip yeah. now, one of your earliest rock and roll performances on that bandstand show that Woo-hoo. I saw you on. Good. And it's called Cast Iron Fist. Oh, yes. I love this the one. The other night, me and my baby went for Well, the other night, me and my baby went for Sit down, boy. I said, don't miss me. I got a cast iron on. Yeah. I said, don't miss me, baby. I got a cast iron on. Come on. And when you make me wild, that only means I love. Now let's hear it. I Johnny Devlin. Whoa, get those moves in. <laughs> Johnny, you're yes. still keeping those moves in? Oh, yes, mate. I searched and searched for a, a clip with you where you were really doing your rock and roll thing. Oh, yeah. That summed it up. Yeah. And Cast Iron Fist says it all, you know. Yeah. Hey, I'm the man. I'm and, the man. Uh, fantastic. I would just, I, you know, you epitomised what rock and roll was about to me at that time. Yeah. I just wanted to be just like that guy. Me too. And uh, <laughs> here I am sitting with you. I'm very honoured to have you tonight. Pleasure. I know you haven't been too well in recent weeks. And things, uh, we're and getting better. Time. We're You're back threading the boards. You yeah. had some great gigs just last weekend. Yeah, fantastic. Here in New Zealand. And, Thank uh, you, Howick. Thank you, Taradale. Um, we can have you back very soon. Yes, sir. When soon? I mean, you're going to be back soon. You have to officer. speak to my new manager, Tom Sharpland. He's there, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will. I'll talk to you. <laughs> Good on you. Johnny, thanks for being here, mate. My pleasure, Jay. My pleasure. I'll we'll see to you again it. soon. Let's do it again. Okay. Thank you. Well, that's us for another week, and uh, thanks for joining us here on Rockin' the Planet. We'll see you same time, same place next week. Until then, keep on rockin'.